what's up guys so macOS 13.1 is here and this update has some major new features and changes as well as new applications that it introduces that i would like to share with you in this video first things first we begin with the update itself so for me on my m1 pro macbook it came in at exactly 1.22 gigs the update size and then the installation size jumped to 2.07 gigs it's, if it's your first time that you're going to be updating to mac os 13.1 perhaps from 13.0.1 then expect the update size to be somewhere between two and a half to six gigs now since i've already updated my device if we go into the new system preferences that we have here and go to general and go to the software update page you'll be able to see that yes i am up to date and the build number that i have currently on file is 22c65 so it could be different depending on when this update releases and if we do get another rc version now before you do see some of the new features and changes that we have i would like to let you know that here at halfman of tech i cover a lot of ios mac os and watch os videos so if that's something that you want to keep up to date with then definitely do subscribe so that you don't miss out now let's talk about some of the new features and new changes that are here when it comes to mac os 13.1 the first First one you probably see when you install macOS 13.1 is this new freeform application now when you open it up for the first time for me you can see it's asking for me to be able to allow iCloud synchronization but basically this new freeform application is meant for collaboration and brainstorming and just basically sharing ideas and you can work on many projects with teams and share links to this so if it's the first time you're trying to share this free form update with someone you have to click on the share icon there in the top right corner and then you see it says you need to turn on iCloud for you to be able to share this board and then you go to your settings and when you go to your iCloud and go to here where it says iCloud and go all the way down to free form you can see here you have the ability to merge your local data with iCloud and then once you merge you can now come back into your free form app and then share to iCloud and you will see that people that you invite here can make edits so right here I do have a free form app that I shared from my iPhone and if I click on it right here you can see that yes it goes through iCloud to retrieve the data and right here it just opened the free form app on my secondary display so I'll just quit this and you can see basically on my iPhone here these are the changes that I'm making and here for example if I do try to type something you can see the line that i just made there it shows right there exactly on the mac and you can see here on the mac you can choose to move it even though it was written using an iphone so if i was to write any shape you can see anything that i write here it does show up and basically this has been improved and the latency delay has reduced unlike what we had before and you can see basically how it works you can make collaborations and you can work with different people and be able to to see it in real time and basically you have a, a large amount of space since it's like unlimited camera and this is the new freeform app the more you zoom out or you go side by side the more space you have and the more changes you are able to make with this so that is something that's here and it's new with this update remember when you do share your link you have the ability to change here that only people you invite who can access only invited people or anyone with the link can make edits and then you also have the ability to change permissions that you have here so that is the new freeform app that we have here when it comes to mac os 13.1 there's also new changes when it comes to notes like i mentioned when it comes to collaboration so notes now have live collaboration so for example if you are writing or working on a note so and then you invite a collaborator to your notes you'll be able to see in real time just like the freeform app who is making those changes when it comes to that shared notes that you guys are going to be working on so that is an update when it comes to the notes live collaboration section oh i'm also happy to show you here safari that it does have some of the new updates that are more towards stability and security so the version that we have on safari is still 16.2 but the build number that i have here 
here is 18614.3.7.1.5 and that has been improved from the previous version which had the build number which was 18614.3.7.1.3 three so the dot five at the end has been uh incremented before we used to have a dot three and this basically has to do with bug fixes and stability changes that are here for safari especially when it comes to moving tabs because before on the previous mac os 13.1 i believe it was beta 3 and beta 4 there were issues when when it came to moving tabs and that issue has been fixed and thanks to this safari build update that has been implemented in this change now if you go into your system settings again and then you go to where it says accessibility and go to where it says live captions when you enable live captions now i'm happy to let you know that if you were to hop on a facetime call and try to make like a facetime call within one for example you can see that this bar that shows up here on the bottom of the screen it does show up and tries to do a live caption once you close this live caption you have a sub menu here that says stop live captions you also have the ability to choose where the audio is coming from computer audio microphone and keep on screen or type to speak so you can also restore defaults here but the only issue that i notice is that this live caption seems to work partially in facetime but in not in most of the other applications or inputs where this is a possibility that can be supported and unfortunately it's still in beta so most of the issues or stability changes are still going to be in beta and might not always work as intended so that is something that's here when it comes to security and stability especially for iCloud if you go into your iCloud settings like I did here and then you go to iCloud and go all the way down you see that you have advanced data protection and if you click here you'll be able to see that unfortunately for me advanced data protection is not yet available in your country origin and if you do have a region or you are in a region where this is supported like the us for example you can be able to turn it on and you see here it says that icloud encrypts your data to keep it secure advanced data protection uses end-to-end -end encryption to ensure that icloud data types listed here can only be decrypted by your trusted devices so yes you are going to be responsible for those security keys or reset phrases and you can see some of the data that can be encrypted such as device backups messages icloud notes photos wallets silly shortcuts reminders and so on so it's unfortunately just rolling out starting with the us and a few other countries and then it's going to be going to more regions later and speaking of photos and synchronization i'll be happy to let you know that if you're using iCloud photos the CSAM update for photos that are synced to iCloud have been discontinued by Apple so if you're a person that synced your photos to iCloud CSAM basically would sometimes try to scan for content that isn't appropriate for users and sometimes all that content will be flagged but this has been dropped by Apple and thanks to 9to5Mac for reporting on this. Now, also when it comes to some other Apple security updates that are going to be coming out pretty soon you can see here on the apple newsroom here that apple on december 7th they basically released an article that highlights some of the new security changes that are going to be here so for example at apple advances user security with powerful new data protections so you see imessage contact key verification you can see here that this in future will be able to tell you that an unrecognized unrecognized device may have been added to your iphone or your account if you are not aware of and this is a, one of the many things that are coming and then also we have security keys here and two-factor authentication and you see here that you can use your security keys to sign in and activate some of your security keys and if you have an nfc key bring it near and it will be able to work as a security key and then you have advanced data protection for iCloud that I've shown here that is already here in Mac OS 13.1 and quite a number of other things that are going to be coming pretty soon to Apple and to Mac OS 
very soon and as always there's going to be apple security updates so if you search for apple security updates you'll be able to see that at the time i'm recording this video mac os 13.1 isn't yet here but you see we have mac os 13.0.1 but as soon as this update hits apple will disclose some of the new security breaches and patches that are, they are aiming at resolving when it comes to mac os 13.1 that's as far as security goes so i'll also like to bring your attention to find my and this is not the find my that you see here when you go into your icloud but it's the find my application that you have on your mac so if you open up your find my app i'll be happy to let you know that now we do have a brand new splash screen and you can see that you can send your location via satellite through the find my and you can find airports in their case so you can now locate individual airports and their cases on the map even if they are not in the case basically if you do use this and you have quite a number of devices that you want to be able to track and see where about this is something that's going to be really helpful for you now when it comes to some of the other issues or or bugs that were existing that have been fixed i'll be happy to let you know that first one has to do with icloud synchronization where some of your data wasn't synchronizing properly when it comes to icloud so that issue has been resolved with this update and also like i mentioned when it comes to safari closing and moving tabs that also has been fixed with mac os 13.1 thanks to the build of safari that they've updated and when it comes to synchronization when, when on some of the other apple apps like the notes and their photos app that issue has been resolved and those application and their data should be syncing correctly now that's about it for me when it comes to mac os 13.1 remember i do cover some other updates such as ios and watch os and if you want to get to know your devices better definitely do subscribe and uh, you won't miss out so stay safe and I'll see you in the next video